Within the same week, two Taylor Swift events occurred and these related, unrelated instances definitely bring us back to an experience in Taylor's history that definitely caused some fever dreams over her eras. We're going to get into these two happenstances and talk about the karma associated with it in this deep dive. So let's go. I'm Kelly, and if you like following clues along an invisible string, then hit subscribe and let's dish on all things Taylor Swift. The first item has to do with threes. Now, I highly doubt that these are the threes that she's talking about when she posted on Instagram for her birthday post and held up three fingers, or when she pressed the button three in the elevator in the Bejeweled music video. But rather, this has to do with three Taylors. Taylor Lautner, Taylor Lautner's wife, Taylor Lautner, and Taylor Swift. To keep things simple, I may refer to them as Twilight Taylor, wife Taylor, and Taylor Swift, or just Taylor, because she's just Taylor. Twilight Taylor marries wife Taylor, and Taylor and Taylor Lautner create this podcast. Um, it is mostly run by wife Taylor, and it's a mental wellness podcast as she became a nurse during the pandemic, and she talks about her experiences with depression, anxiety, and PTSD. So naturally, one of her guests is her husband, Taylor Lautner, who was a big Twilight star and is also an ex-boyfriend of Taylor Swift. Twilight Taylor and Taylor Swift met on the set of Valentine's Day and were definitely a couple in 2009. In this podcast, Wife Taylor asks Twilight Taylor about an experience that maybe he would change or something he regrets and goes back on. And Twilight Taylor brings up the 2009 VMAs. Let's go back a little bit in history. 2009 VMAs, Taylor, Twilight Taylor and Taylor Swift had recently gone public with their relationship. They were definitely dating. And Taylor Lautner and Shakira go up to the podium and they announce for best music video of the year. Taylor Swift wins, Kanye comes up, he says that Beyonce had the best video of all time and you know, this kind of just lights the fuse and creates the tension. So Twilight Taylor talks about how in that instance, he thought that this was a publicity stunt, kind of like a bit that was going on. And when he was watching it, he was almost kind of seen laughing or giggling or not being supportive because he just thought this was just kind of to get some fanfare. To put it in context, this was the days where um, MTV was definitely looking for those hooks, those crazy moments like Britney Spears kissing Madonna or even Britney coming out on a snake. So they're definitely looking for ways to attract the audience. So it's definitely plausible that he would think that this was a stunt and not just Kanye making his own decision to come up and rush the stage and take the award from her. Twilight Taylor is sharing with the audience, sharing with all of us that he has been harboring this guilt or kind of keeping this inside. And now he is releasing that, letting that go, that he wanted to be supportive for her. Um, but at that moment, he definitely was taken aback and not realizing what was going on. It's almost undeniably that people believe that the song Back to December is about Taylor Lautner. And in those lyrics you have, I miss your tan skin, your sweet smile, so good to me, so right. And you held me in your arms that September night, the first time you ever saw me cry, which references back to September 13th, 2009 at the VMAs. Definitely this was in the aftermath of what happened on stage, but you can tell that there was some support and love there for him. It did not seem that their relationship could stand the test of time and the two broke up shortly after, hence the song Back to December, um, where she writes about kind of the remorse that she feels about breaking things off with this really nice guy. Um, I think this song is really, really influential in Taylor's career because previous to that, she had kind of gotten a reputation for singing about her being hurt, her being wronged, her loving someone who doesn't love her back. And this is one of the first times that Taylor is really showing us kind of accountability of breaking someone's heart. You then kind of open the floodgates for a lot of her songs along the way of her taking blame or credit for things going sour in a relationship. 
and you definitely get some midnight rain. Let's move on to the second event relating Taylor that has to do both with ex-boyfriends and the 2009 VMAs. The 65th Grammys came out the same week as The Squeeze and Taylor was there in attendance. She's not performed, but she was nominated for several awards, mainly for um, her Red Taylor's Version album. She did end up winning an award for Best Music Video Short Form for the All Too Well 10-Minute um, Version, which she directed, really kind of giving that recognition and celebrating her new foray into directing. So here is the connection to what happens. When it is time to announce the album of the year, Harry Styles wins for Harry's House. Now, Beyonce was also nominated for her album as well. However, Harry won. Harry takes the stage and while he's giving his acceptance speech, there are some people in the crowd who start to heckle him. They start saying, get off the stage. People are yelling Beyonce. And all the while this is happening, Taylor rises up. She stands up. She stares straight at Harry, giving him this perfect little speak now moment of horrified looks of everyone in the room, but I'm only looking at you and she's there supporting her ex, knowing that, you know, this is probably a little triggering for her as she had an award that people were saying something different about the worthiness of her accepting it. So it was a huge, huge support for an ex and definitely a class act moment for Taylor Swift. Wrap it all up. These two events, I mean, I think I just have to take the lyrics from Karma of ask me what I've learned from all those years. Ask me what I've earned from all those tears. Ask me why so many fade, but I'm still here. She's now at a point where she's getting her, getting along with her exes. She is enjoying herself. She is kind of like in that comfort zone, just having that confidence. And it is really, really awesome to see. You wanna see what my predictions are for the Eras set tour list? Definitely check that out. I'm gonna be posting more of these, so hit subscribe and always stay up to date with all of Taylor news. All right, friends, have a great one.